Okay, before I start my presentation, I'd like to introduce my cheese platter. We like to love our cheeses. I've got this great Danish blue, a lovely French breeze, of course, a sturdy English cheddar, and last but not least, the Dutch Gouda. Keep them in mind, they will be back. <laughs> I don't lose them here. Today we'll discuss the current global take on and awareness of accessibility, diversity and equality in archaeology and I will attempt to interpret why some cultures are open to these issues and other cultures might even be apprehensive in adopting the idea of equality and diversity being urgent necessities. Now is there a necessity in Europe to encourage archaeologists to get everyone involved in archaeology? Or might there already be enough diversity? Why is there an equality and diversity group in British archaeology and not, for instance, in the Netherlands? Is it because there are problems with equality in the UK, or might there be such a group since the UK has raised more awareness around diversity issues? What are archaeologists abroad doing to make archaeology accessible for all, if anything? It could be debated that this awareness is a cultural phenomenon, or yes, even a revenue model. And if so, is that a bad thing? must have been 17 years ago when I had to come up with a subject for my thesis. For some time then, I was wondering about the interpretation of our data in, a, in my mind, very narrow, one-sided perspective. In all research, people from the past seem to be living and working in family structures consisting of a mum, a dad, 2.2 children, okay, maybe more, a dog, that might be just my interpretation, dad bringing home the bacon, or the wild ball, whatever was at hand, and mum doing the cooking and the cleaning and maybe some gathering of plants and nuts. Having read Jean Marie Al's plan for Cape Bear years before, I decided it would be a magnificent plan if I was combine women's studies and archaeology and see if I could come up with a broad solution leaving room for different ideas on, well, family structures and provision of labour and social, economic, political influences, etc. etc. I was all excited to tell my professor, mind you, classical archaeology, about this in my mind, brand and novel idea. So I made an appointment to meet early in the morning. I think I was in and out of his office within five minutes. Practically left out of bed. Marlos, do you think we're still in the seventies? Go as you help return back to Earth and come back with a suitable subject. You might as well suggest to do research on influence from aliens of Mars on well, interesting society. You could say there was a tad devastating, which you never say long. So I soon came back with a different, apparently more suitable subject, intercultural processes within the Roman Empire. And with that, I guess I took the first steps within the theme of my archaeological career, diversity. And with that story, I guess I learned a lesson I would learn again and again. We don't live in the 70s anymore. Make a better shame. <laughs> in April 2016, I visited SIFA conference in Leicester. It was my first time at SIFA, so a lot to be excited about meeting new people and hearing these great stories on community archaeology and outreach. And much to my surprise, there was this equality and diversity group. Oh my, it was a complete eye opener for me to see that this was even possible within the working field of archaeology. And that was when I first started wondering why we don't have such a group in the Netherlands. We are really good in uniting ourselves in all kinds of small specialty groups. Not so much as a branch though. But why not a diversity group? If we can't see or have our own diversity within the working field, how can we bring diversity to the table in reaching the public? How can we help society by means of archaeology if we don't set an example? And how can we possibly know if we're making archaeology accessible for all? With these questions in mind, I started to do some qualitative research. I wanted to know what the trend is in the Netherlands and if I could compare this with other countries. Before I would actually interview people who know their stuff in this field of expertise, I wanted to set up a framework. And I figured, let's keep it lovely, random, and ask a broad question on Facebook. To be more precise, we have this Archaeology 3.0 Facebook group in which we try to address everything that might be bad and ugly in Dutch archaeology and come up with solutions. So I thought this is the place for me to ask my big question Is there diversity in Dutch archaeology? 
That should not be such an offensive question, right? Well, apparently wrong. <laughs> I did get the, oh, I know this Moroccan archaeologist. And the, uh, well, in company such and such, we have a transgender archaeologist. And the, uh, well, hey, that one knows easy. Who says this? But soon came the, why do you want to divide us? Responses. Apparently, by posing the mere question, I was labeling people. Marus, you know as well as all of us that in companies such and such, we have homosexuals, there is a woman team lead, and they even have a lady manager, so do not get what you're trying to research it. <laughs> in Dutch archaeology, we are all the same. Yeah. And my favourite response by far, and it was not even meant to be simple, we don't have any issues with diversity since there is no diversity. Yeah, well, that might be true. I don't think we're all the same equal, yes. The same, no, nor do I want to be. And if we're all treated equally, well, that's still up for debate. However, these responses did get me more curious. Maybe if I would frame my terminology better, I would get to the bottom of this. Now, what do I mean when I speak of diversity? I, for one, would consider ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, physical disability, mental health issues, but also differences in socioeconomic regard. It's an explicit acknowledgement that differences exist, and it's a celebration of these differences. So this became a framework for my interview questions. I had coffee meetups with my experts from the different target groups, tasted some excellent coffee, and got inspired. I collected a lot of stories of things going right, or are we wrong? But the main idea seems to be, no, we're not doing enough. We're not even close to being diverse in Dutch archaeology. People from different target groups, from the community, don't recognize themselves in the stories you bring to the people. <coughs> we are running behind in these matters in comparison to other European countries. Diversity can do so much in, for instance, interpreting our data we are actually selling science short by not including these people, these minority groups, these different perspectives. My biggest passion in life is being a team lead. I love talking to people and hearing about their passion and giving them a stage to display their talents or giving them the tools I needed to develop these talents and motivating them to help each other reach the team goals by making use of all the talent available in the group. In my opinion, Society is nothing more than a big team with team goals which you can reach by listening to each other's needs and passions and making use of all the talents available. This awareness of different talents and different perspectives seems to be non existent in Dutch archaeology. Let me tell you another story. Not too long ago, I was invited to have some beers at this Dutch beer pub, and discuss everything that's, well, wrong and well, just ugly in, in Dutch archaeology and the world while we're at it. And I assume this got as often. I was the only female present in the group. He used to say the masculine, healthy, 30 something, white, heterosexual male was only present. And as I was working on this paper, the topic of diversity soon came up. But instead of dealing with the issues, what is going on? How can we make people feel more included? The discussion was about me telling them we had an issue and then denying it. They kept pestering me for stats, as if observing isn't enough. See who's in that big meeting with you, who is leading the excavation for that matter in the of discussing archaeology. But I discovered they sincerely do not register dealing with the same norm group day in, day out. They're not deliberately trying to exclude, they're simply not aware of this exclusion. And they do not get why it should harm science. They're convinced they can interpret all data from all kinds of perspectives. So people being included or excluded should not make that much of a difference anyway. And it's not just archaeology. This level of awareness seems to be present in every field in, in the Netherlands. So what is going on with this country? I know some people, any from the norm group, cannot be without statistics. They need proof. Without all hard facts, we apparently cannot solve anything. So, okay, statistics then. 
92% Dutch archaeology working populations born in the Netherlands, 7% in other European countries, and 1% in the rest of the world. And as I understand it, in the four big cities in the Netherlands, 20 to 25% of adults is foreign. In Dutch archaeology working population, 37 to 42%, it has come up a bit, is female. Numbers go down when we look at executive positions. In research conducted in 2008, none of the respondents had indicated to have a disability. So the report says there are no disabilities. In research from 2014, the question on uh, disability was still in the questionnaire. 2.5% of Dutch archaeology work population, but no specifics. So I'm not sure if mental health issues were, in, were even included. And there were actually no questions on sexual orientation or social economic background. And this is where I will stop giving you numbers and I will tell you why. Feelings of exclusion are not to be captured in statistics. It really doesn't matter if these figures are confirming or denying these feelings. And it doesn't even matter who is causing these feelings, archaeology or society as a whole, if we, as archaeologists, don't take responsibility in involvement, we will not only lose these target groups for archaeology, we will lose all relevance in society. Why is it so distant in the UK? It seems like from the 60s and 70s of the 20th century, minority groups in Great Britain have been more vocal, well educated, assertive and visible. There is proper legislation in the UK on uh, inclusiveness, as is, for instance, the case in Germany. The Dutch government tends to start documents with the words, the aim is to, which doesn't get the job done. Big companies shove these aims aside. There are no consequences. Why make the effort? While in Great Britain and Germany, funds and other money dispensers are set to administer rules on inclusiveness. Dutch funds don't make this a priority. And another thing, the UK has a history in debate. Dutch state debating personal. If someone disagrees, you, well, can take that as an assault. You have to defend yourself and all means to do so are allowed. This is not really constructive in innovation. <laughs> uh, or opinions that differ from mainstream even. The Dutch pride themselves on being told. This image might partially have been built during, well, the innovations of the 60s. Could this be a case of dialectics of lead? We started out as these free spirits, and by the 70s we thought, well, okay, that's that, and we've done the work, had some great ideas on equality, and that first thing never have to deal with again. We have this Dutch saying, do normal, do do you all Translated would say something like, just that normal, that's great enough already. It reflects our wish to be average. We want to blend in. So even if we are different, we never like to embrace it. We might reveal that we're gay or have a disability, but we try to act upon this as little as possible. And this explains why minority groups are less vocal and less visible, simply not accepted. It implies that the status quo is not easily questioned. Also, the Dutch allergy to hierarchy. When governments advises or imposes stuff, who make fun of them and then work around it? <laughs> Making equality part of policy or institutionalize it, that will not make a difference. But make no mistake, if government doesn't lead by example, we will uh, state that if they do not apply equality, we should not either. <laughs> the Dutch are a people of trade. Even our tolerance concerning uh, freedom of religion in the 17th century was well, based on us being able to uh, print and sell Bibles that were banned from being printed in France. So when I asked my experts why we don't have a diversity group in the Netherlands, they asked me how this group could be turned into a revenue model. They pointed out to me that all specialty groups in Dutch archaeology are mainly there to protect the earnings of the specialists. 
help me that if we could convince, uh, well, the companies in archaeology that diversity would make them money, that would be a diversity group in no time. That should not be too hard to establish, right? Now, in conclusion, a bit like all this did research, give me the answers I was looking for. Are we doing enough to make archaeology accessible for all? In the Netherlands, we most certainly don't. And not because we don't want to, but simply not aware of the phenomenon of diversity. Is awareness a cultural phenomenon? I do think so, and the Dutch seem to lack culture and background for it. We need an impulse. Government needs to lead by example, but without financial backup, this awareness won't stick. Are diversity and equality facts? Well, they keep coming back in history, so I don't think they're facts. As our former Minister of Foreign Trade and Development, Liliana Bloom, has stated, emancipation is not a noun, it's a work, but it's a verb. We have to keep working at it. Is diversity a revenue model? Well, it could be. And in the Netherlands, it might well be the answer to making diversity an urgent necessity. Can we benefit from exchange of knowledge? I think we have to acknowledge that every country, every culture, has to be uh, aware, has to uh, analyse where they stand on raising this awareness. Solutions are as diverse as the people involved. So we can exchange knowledge, but we have to be aware that this needs a customised approach. Which brings me back to my cheese platter. <laughs> as you can see, these are all cheeses. But as with raising awareness, they're all cultivated in different ways to fit the taste of different groups of people. So in, in their own way, they taste great. But if you treat them wrong, they will stick. And with that, I thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you.